Many are convinced that the entire train crisis is just a political attempt to bash the Prime Minister both within and outside of the Likud party. Similar attempts to oust Netanyahu were made by former Defense Minister Moshe Yalon, who is now no longer a part of the government. ILTV's Steve Liebowitz sat down with Jerusalem Post editor Yaakov Katz to hear about how Yalon may be making a comeback with plans to become the next Prime Minister. You wrote an interesting column called The Man Who Could Beat Netanyahu, Ready to Challenge Bibi. And you were talking about former Defense Minister Moshe Yahalon. Why do you think Moshe Yahalon could beat Netanyahu? I think Yahalon has the credentials when it comes to security. He is a former IDF chief of staff, a former defense minister, and he could contend and compete with Netanyahu, who also presents himself to the Israeli electorate as Mr. Security. So he has that. He also has come from the right wing. He's very right wing, and the Israeli electorate has moved to the right in recent years. So they're looking for a leader of the right and I think my prediction would be is that the left does not have a leader right now they don't have the party that can really compete and and win an election against Netanyahu but someone from the right has that potential yeah alone could be that candidate Netanyahu is still the prime minister we're not certain what his plans are for the future if he leaves the Likud do you see alone forming an, a different party or trying to take over the leadership within Likud so in the meantime since he's left uh, the defense ministry just a couple months ago he's already formed a new NGO called alternative leadership which he's using kind of as a platform that can he can go around give lectures speak to people meet different dem demographics and different sectors of Israeli society raise some funds and that could be converted if the day comes into a political platform and into a party that he can then run on that ticket in the next election my prediction, though, would be that if Netanyahu decides not to run for a fifth term and to step down, resign, go home, and make money, let's say, uh, then Yalon would potentially run for the chairmanship of the Likud party. It would be possibly a bloodbath inside the Likud the day after Netanyahu because a lot of people would be vying for that top spot. But yet Yalon would be one of the natural uh, candidates to run for there. So I think... It's too early to tell what will happen, but I would say that if Netanyahu decides to run for, for in the next election or for another term, Yalon will definitely run at the head of a new party, possibly connected to an existing politician. Could be Naftali Bennett from by UD, could be Moshe Kachlan from Kulanu. We could see a mix and different combinations and alliances and partnerships that today don't seem possible, but at the time when those elections come, might be viable because a lot of these people have won uh, objective in mind, and that is to dethrone Benjamin Netanyahu, to get him to lose the premiership and to replace him. So it could be that people who thought that they would be the prime minister are willing to step to number two in their party to allow someone else, and if that alliance works, to get Netanyahu out. In the months before he left office as defense minister, Yalon was actually coming under quite a bit of criticism from within his own Likud party because of certain things that he had said and, and done. Do you think that he still would have the political support to become leader of Likud? I think so. I think that he has, uh, he's on the right, if you recall, and you're referring to uh, comments that he made in defense of the deputy chief of staff who made some controversial remarks around the Holocaust Remembrance Day and around the Hebron shooting incident. He came out and defended the IDF decision to launch a criminal investigation, while a lot of the right-wing political map defended the Hebron shooter, that soldier, Elor Azaria. So he did come under criticism, but I think that there's a very simple way to know whether he's right or not. Netanyahu, for example, has embraced the two-state solution, gave that famous Bar Ilan speech where he said, um, I want to establish a Palestinian state. Yalon has been opposed to that, has been against a Palestinian state for a number of years. So he definitely is a hawk. He's definitely on the right. He has the credentials. He's been in favor of settlements. He's been a darling of the settlement movement. Is he a good enough politician? That's the question. Is he a good enough politician, and does he know how to get his hands dirty in politics? Because when, you know, when you're chief of staff and you, you get parachuted into a political party, you're something of a celebrity, you're a star, you don't have to get your hands dirty. Uh, he doesn't have that stardust anymore. He will have to get his hands dirty. And as we all know, politics is a dirty business, a lot of backstabbing, a lot of handling, a lot of negotiating in back channels and under the table and behind closed doors. I don't know if Yalo knows how to do that. This will be the real test of his capability as a politician and as a leader if he can create that type of uh, political animal that you need to be to be able to become prime minister in Israel. Yaakov Katz, thanks so much for being with us at ILTV. Thank you.